subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Yeah, it's always a joy to be with you with particle chemistry. As a person, I really enjoy the particle chemistry a lot. That is why we enjoy learning channel. We want to bring to you exclusively chemistry particles. Right, so as you know already, I am with the one that Wisdom Agbesina on Joy Learning Channel. Chemistry Practical. Just sit back, relax. Get your calculators ready because we're going to do some calculations. <laughs> Come with me. <laughs> okay, so the question we want to tackle now is concerning molar mass and relative atomic mass. So the question is, how do I calculate molar mass, relative atomic mass through titration? So the question will demand that we do calculations. We provide answers for the molar mass and relative atomic mass through the titration. So we're going to run the titration as usual. And you must know that for the titration using the period, pipette, all those solutions will always be the same. The skills will be the same able to obtain consistent titus will be the same. So if you are able to develop that skill, then you are good to go. You can even be sleeping whilst running it to get consistent titus. But the questions that you'll be tackling are over 1,001. They can come in various, various ways, varying ways. But the concept will always be the same. So if you are learning the concept, learn it well and then make sure you have that skill of obtaining consistent titles when you are before a setup to run a volumetric process. Then you may ask why this titration, titration? Please, titration has international recognition. Take Ghana Standards Authority. They run volumetric analysis on some products, liquid products. Take Food and Drugs Authority. They do the same. And other research institutions in this country and beyond. So if you are learning it in your school, please make sure you learn it and learn it well. Okay, so let's begin our work. So I have my setup here. As usual, everything is guarded as much as I will need. Let's go to the question. What is the question asking us to do? Everything you need to solve the problem is in the problem. So this is the problem. The preamble. C is a solution of HX containing 6.50 grams per dm cubed. What does that tell you? D. It's a solution of NaOH containing 3.90 grams per dm cubed. What does that tell you? The C and D are variables representing the chemical species that will be taking part in the reaction as you carry out the titration. Then the instruction. A. Put C into the burette and titrate it against 25.0 cm cube portions of D using phenolphthalein as indicator. What else? Tabulate your readings and calculate the average volume of D used. And of course, you must repeat the titration. You have at least three titrations to perform. So the equation is in there, and the uh, hx there is just a variable that you have been given. That is not your concern. You have things to work with. So work with them as they are 
given. The blank space is for our table there. So here, B, from your result and the information provided, calculate the I concentration of C in mole per D and keep I, I molar mass of HX. HX is representing something that we don't know. So through the titration, we want to determine its molar mass. And then I, 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 we want to find a value of X. X is a chemical species, an atom or an element. So we want to find that value there. And of course, its relative atomic mass. But the question you can state that you should find the relative atomic mass of X or the value of x is representing relative atomic mass because it is making the hx to be a compound. Then I have a bonus question for you. That is the C part of it. What volume of solution mixture that will be evaporated to obtain 5.0 grams of Na? So that one is a bonus question in addition to the main thing for this lesson. Right, so let's go back. Okay, so the blank space, first thing, our table, and then of course, write the volume of pipettes. So we are using 25.0 cm cubed of pipettes. If you are using 20, just write it there. Then you use a straight edge to get your table. So I have my beret. Reading per cm cubed, I have my final reading, my initial reading, and then the title. So we are going to do three of that. You can use one, two, three, A, B, C, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I have my solutions in the because the solution C and solution D. Then I have my phenolphthalein indicator here. I have my conical flux and everything. First, I raise inside my funnel with distilled water. This is my waste beaker. Just to remove any contaminant. Rinse inside this conical flask. Rinse inside the pipettes. Rinse inside the burret. So now upright the bread means it is ready for use. Next thing, what is to be put in the bread? Put C into the bread.
So condition inside the buret with sum of C. Waste speaker. So now I can fill the buret with C. Fill it to a point. Let me move this so that you can see well. Open. Open the buret and make sure that there are no air bubbles inside. You can massage the rubber tubing to make sure there are no air trapped inside there. So to make things, well, let me shift this a little there. So that you see it clearly and follow clearly. Because I joy learning, we believe in your success. So I'm still feeling feel the beret a little above the zero mark. Okay. Remove the funnel before you do reading. Now I want to bring the solution to the zero point on the beret, but if I do this, it's too far above my head, so I will not get any accurate reading. Therefore, I have to bring everything to the lab stool. So this is, don't laugh at me, this is my lab stool. You are the one in your school may be more beautiful than the one I'm using here. So, so we come here. And then accurately bring it to the zero mark. Yep. So the kef that is the meniscus should just sit on the zero mark there. If it is not, make sure everything is there. Then bring the buret back to the stand. So my buret is ready to use. The next thing is to pipette solution D. I'm not using my math to pipette solution D, but I'm using the pipette filler. So I have that. Insert it gently in the like that gently and firmly then press the top there and deflate the bulb like that uh -huh. okay so dip the tip of the pipette into the solution then you suck the middle there you press the s the yeah then we have the either empty or evacuate. Make sure everything is down there. Accuracy is very, very important in chemistry. Okay, so transfer there and deliver the solution. Tilt the conical flask to about 45 degrees and touch the tip of the pipette at the dry 
bottom of the conical flask. We have pipetted our D into the conical flask. So let's add the indicator. One, two, three. And that we have the pink there. Let's see the control experiment. So I have the ionized water here or distilled water. And then I add phenolphthalein there. See that it's colorless. So that's our control. That should be our endpoint. So let's run the titration. Don't forget I have my white background here just to ensure clearer observation of the endpoint color change. Okay, where is my table? Because we're going to fill the table. Right, so the table is here. So let's run our first. This one, we have to be more careful because this is the beginning. So more careful at it. The pink will be fading until it gets to the colorless. Then we stop. So if it is fading, you take your time. So the pink is almost gone. Take your time, just a drop. So more careful, the pink is almost gone. Last drop. Uh -huh. So you see that? You see. Okay, so that's our end point. So you read what is there. Bring it to your eye level. And let's read. It's 9.1. So final reading, 0 0.10. We started from 0 0.00. So title will be 9.10. I have enough solution in the be red so i can continue from there so 9.10 so let's see the final so i'm going to pipette another solution so this one goes away into the drain rinse inside the conical flask So I pipe it again. Remove air, deflate the bulb. Okay. Let me move away things so you can see well. Okay. So because I want a clearer view, I want to push this a little. So I can take away this one too. Just creating a clearer view for you to follow well. This is Joy Learning Channel. We love you. So we want you to get the best. Okay, let's go. Okay, so let's continue filling. Meter above. Zero eight. Down there. Okay, so it's there. Let's transfer there. 
So this can go away. This can now. So we deliver. So after delivery, touch the dry part of the conical flask inside there with the tip of the pipette. Uh -huh. So we are ready. Let's have our indicator. We started with three drops, so three drops. One, two, three, we have that. So let's run, let me tilt a bit so you can see well. Adjust that. Right, so let's repeat the process. Now we know the possible end point, which is around 9.0. As you see the color fading, you take your time. Color is fading, so take your time. Drop by drop. One drop. Okay. So that's it. So we read. So I have 18.3 there, that's my final. I have enough, so I can still do my last one. So you pipette again, this one goes to the waist. So rinse inside again. So I pipette the third one. Everything should go away. Deflates the bulb and then insert. So let's fill the... Make sure there are no air bubbles. Okay. Okay, transfer there. As usual. Okay, so we are done with the pipette. Go, it will go. Indicator come. So three drops. Okay. So we are done with you. Indicator now. Everything. We don't need you again. You come. Okay. So let's read what is there. We are continuing. So the initial here will give me 18.30. So let's now look for the final. Don't put stress on the rubber tubing so that the solution can flow well. Right.
as the color is fading please take your time just a drop okay a one drop uh -huh. so that's it we are making accurate measurements so you can't just run everything at once no because the change is telling us that the reaction between the two chemical substances is complete that is why you have to take your time now this let me finish my reading before i continue so i have uh, 27 point uh, 7 so 27.70 so from for this titration using phenolphthalein in acid base if i add everything to this color change after we have obtained the colorless you will not see any color again you can add everything you can add everything now it's at 32 and no color again so it means that you can exceed the accuracy threshold without knowing this particular titration is very sensitive you have to take your time and run it slowly and accurately otherwise if you exceed the end point you will get values that are fluctuating it will not give you any accuracy now you must be a little bit faster at it because there is the air pressure there in the atmosphere we have acidic gases there so in the atmosphere we have oxides of carbon oxides of sulfur oxides of nitrogen that when they dissolve in water they form acidic solutions so as you are titrating, those gases are also part of it, more or less dissolving in the solution that you are titrating. So you must be a bit faster, but more careful in order to get accurate readings. So if they don't run small, then you waste more, run small, you waste more. No, you may not have consistent titers. You be having varying values that will not be well for the calculation. So that is phenolphthalein titration. So let's fill our table. So here I will have to the 9.20, and then I will have for the 9.20. Four zero. Right. So this is our table, and they say we should calculate the average titer. So we look at a maximum of two consistent titers. If we look at the table, the first and second are consistent. The third and the second are also consistent because we have a difference of zero point two, and that is the threshold. That is the maximum. Above that. Your values are not consistent. That one or below, your values are consistent. So the first and the third one are not consistent. So you either choose the first and second, or you choose second and third for your average volume. So we can create the average volume. of c used will give me which one you want to take so 9.10 plus 9.20 all on 2 so that will give me 
kinked. Right, so this is our table with the average volume. Let's go solve the questions. Right, they said from your results and the information provided, calculate the concentration of C in mole per dm kit. So we go to the equation given and the mole ratio is 1 is to 1. So if it is 1 is to 1, then it means that I can have the concentration of C equal to the volume of D times concentration of D all on volume of C. Do we know the concentration of D? Is it given in the question? No, it's not given. But we have mass concentration. So if we have mass concentration, it means that we can calculate the molar concentration. So the mass concentration is 3.9. So molar concentration of D equal to 3.90. D is sodium hydroxide. So the molar mass there is 40 grams per mole. So 3.90 divided by 40, that will give me 0 0.0975 mole per dm. Kept. So I can conveniently do my substitution to give me the BI answer. So concentration of C equal to volume of C is volume of D is 25.0 times concentration of D 0.0975 all on 9.15 that is the average title so 9.0 sorry 0 0.0975 times 25.0 divided by 9.15 and that gives me 0. 266 more per dm cubed. Okay, so that answers the BI. The BI says what? Molar mass of HX. What information do we have? We have mass concentration of HX to be 6.50. So repeating the same concept, we have molar concentration of C equal to mass concentration of C all on molar mass of C. That is HX, so you can use HX. So make molar mass of HX, the subject, equal to, that will be mass concentration of C on molar concentration of C. So, the molar concentration of C we have calculated. The mass concentration is 6.5. So, I have 6.50 on 0.2 Six, six. So that gives me 6.5 divided by 0 0.266. That will give me 24 whole number grams per mole. You see. So that is BII. Now the II I says we should find a value of x. And don't forget 
this is the molar mass so the molar mass of h x is 24 grams per mole we are looking for the value and in calculating the molar mass is the sum of the atomic masses of the atoms making up the compound so it means that to find a value of x i'm going to have the atomic mass of h that is one plus that of x that is the atomic mass of x should give me 24. so x will give me 24 minus 1 that gives me 23. you see so the value of x is 23. very very simple just follow the concept and you get it done the bonus question says that we should find the volume when 5 grams of the solution mixture that is nx is obtained as a result of evaporating that volume that we are looking for so what should i do i have to find the moles of nax because i know the mass so moles of nax because i know the mass i know that mole of nax will give me mass on molar mass so if i know mass can i calculate the molar mass of nax yes because i know the value of x so i can calculate that so molar mass of nax will give me 23 that is the atomic mass for sodium plus x we have found it to be 23 so that gives me 46 grams per mole so i can do my substitution into the n NAX equal to mass, which is 5.0 grams, given in the question, divided by 46, and that gives me a value. So 5 divided by 46 is 0 0.109 mole. Make sure your approximations must be correct. Okay, now that I know the moles of NAX, what else should I do? Take note that from the question, we are looking for volume. And then we have calculated the concentration of D. And then we have calculated the concentration of C. So, we have HX producing the NAX. So, if I find the moles of HX and NAX, that means that the ratio will be 1 is to 1 from the equation given in the in the question here so that that is one is to one and that one is to one is in one dm cubed right so n of n a x equal to n of h x equal to 0 0.266 mole and don't forget this one is in 1 dm cubed so if this mole is in 1 dm cubed what volume will 0 0.10 mole give us so i know that concentration equal to n on v 
the same. And we have the concentration of NAX to be 0 0.600 because the mole ratio is 1 is to 1 for NAX and HX. So we are looking for volume. If we are looking for volume, it implies that volume of NAX that's supposed to be evaporated to obtain 5 grams of NAX will give me N on concentration. So N is 0 0.109 divided by 0 0.266. And so that gives me the volume that I want. 0 0.109 divided by 0 0.266. So that gives me 0 0.41. DM kit. So that is the volume that will be evaporated to obtain 5 grams of NAX. Take note the concentration of NAX from our mole ratio is 0 0.266. So that one is in mole per DM kit. And then we have calculated the amount of substance using the molar mass of NAX and the mass given and that gives us the moles. So if we do the substitution, we have 0 0.41. So I can decide to leave it in CM cubed. So I'm going to have 410 CM cubed of NAX volume will be evaporated to obtain the mass. You see, so it's very, very simple. Just follow the concept well and then get it done. As I said, the volumetric analysis or the titration is always the same, but the questions will vary. Now, because we are in a Christmas season, I want to leave you with a, a bonus from experimental demonstration. I love it so much because it has to do with colors. So let's see. This is your Christmas gift. Thank you. I have concentrated nitric acid here then I have copper metal here copper chippings so I want to put a little here inside the conical flask just a little okay So I have copper metals here. Then I want to add some of the nitric acid here. Please, as a student, don't expose yourself to concentrated acids. So this one is solely demonstration by your teacher in your lab. So I want to add some here. And here we are. So a brown gas is being produced. This gas is NO2. That's nitrogen 4 oxide. It is reacting with copper. Because it is denser than air, I should be able to pour this inside another 
container. So I have another conical flax here. So I want to pour it into it. So just watch. Can you see? Uh -huh. So it's denser than air. So it goes to displace air upward. So it can be poured. You see, so I have poured it here. You see, so, so beautiful. And then the resulting solution supposed to be green, but it's blue here because there are water particles in the conical flask I'm using. That is why you see it blue. The blue there is as a result of hydrated copper 2 ions. So it's a joyous new year on Joy Learning Channel with me, with the one as wisdom and blessing. Bye bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.